Welcome back to another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight-up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. So, Fallout 76, huh? People hated this game back when it came out, and I, I was one of them. In fact, uh, I kind of hated it for a long time. To Bethesda's credit, they didn't abandon it, though. They stuck with it, and uh, with the surprisingly good Fallout TV show driving interest to the franchise again, more people have been trying the game than they have in years. And what better time than now for us to finally dive back into the game and see how much it's improved. Like, to be completely honest here, I gave up on Fallout 76 basically immediately after launch. I turned it off, I uninstalled it, and I actively ignored the game for a long time. Whenever it was brought up or mentioned, I made fun of it because it was bad. But in the interim of me not playing the game, Bethesda continued working on it. Uh, there's been 18 major updates, number 19 is releasing in June, and they aren't just basic additions, they've pretty much overhauled entire segments of the game. The Wastelanders update from April 14th, 2020 added actual NPCs and a new main story quest, which is huge. Keep in mind, the original game had no NPCs at all, uh, other than uh, some robots and a super mutant, which if you understand how NPCs are in these games, those are not NPCs, despite them technically being NPCs. Uh, in 2022, they added expeditions, which are more linear challenges in far off locations you can take on with a team or by yourself. And now in 2024, they fully expanded that system by giving you a new city to explore with its own quests and side quests in Atlantic City. If your only experience with Fallout 76 was playing it back when it came out, then what we're looking at today is basically an entirely new game. Almost everything about it has been rebalanced, expanded, and improved. In 2024, it is a much better game than it once was. Is it enough to elevate it to actually being a good game? Well, that's kind of what we're here to find out. The important thing to keep in mind about Fallout 76 is that even with the new bells and whistles at its core, this is still the same game. And it still has a lot of the same problems it had at launch. Enemies are still dumb as hell. Many areas can look but ugly even with your settings set up to max. And the server-based nature of the gameplay leads to a lot of compromises that would not be there if you were playing Fallout 4. Also, it's a live service game, so there's tons of microtransactions. And I, I'm not saying this lightly. There are so many microtransactions in this game. But the overall experience is so much better now than it was when it first came out. The weight of a lot of stuff has been cut down, so you can actually carry some things with you. Ammo's more plentiful. There are storage chests all over the place. And while it still costs cabs to fast travel, there's a lot of places where you can fast travel to for free. Um, so that's not really a problem anymore. Having actual quests and NPCs makes the world feel a lot more vibrant, too. I know they added in all this stuff for the first time like four years ago, but it's it's pretty new to me. I didn't play this game four years ago. I played it at launch, and that's it. The actual quests uh, don't have the depth of something from Fallout New Vegas, per se, but you can make dialogue choices, uh, and what you say depends on your special stats. There's actually some choices to make. It almost feels like a proper Fallout game. The new area of Atlantic City isn't particularly big. Um, it's mostly just split between three smallish areas, but the new quests they've added recently are fun to explore, even they're, like I said, a little railroaded and basic compared to this sort of thing in other Fallout games. It's just kind of tricky getting to this place, too. To access Atlantic City, you have to unlock expeditions first, which requires you to go to the White Spring Refuge and help out with the Responders Faction. And uh, there's, I mean, they're relatively simple, but there's a few side quests you got to do. Even here, some of the flaws of Fallout 76 still shine through. Um, like, there's a person who wants you to donate 50 pieces of molded plastic. So I check my inventory. I've got five pieces of that specific item. Uh, but oh wait, they say molded plastic, but they actually just mean plastic. So why didn't they just say plastic? Because this is pretty simple. I mean, that's a needlessly confusing thing, especially for all of us who have been kind of conditioned to the specificity of 
Fallout stuff, and that's kind of Fallout 76 overall. It's still a little sloppy, even with all the updates it's gotten. Oddly enough, almost none of the quests in Atlantic City actually start there. The mainline quest begins in Appalachia, and not even in the White Spring Refuge, so if you actually want to experience the main story of this place, you need to look around a little. It's sort of a pain to actually start up, but the quests in Atlantic City are worth doing, even if it's not quite as intriguing as I'd hoped. Uh, the game doesn't allow for a lot of the more complex simulations of previous games, so you get weird situations like this part where enemies go hostile on you in a scripted event, but nobody else in the area reacts. You can kill the boss of a faction, and other than the guys that are programmed to attack you, all the other guys uh, who are enemies kind of just don't care. Fallout 76 just isn't as immersive an RPG as previous Fallouts. Like, it lets you do dumb stuff, like respawn in the same room and plink away at the boss until they're dead, just running away and automatically getting a reward. Like, it's video gamey in a way that other entries in the series aren't, and a lot of that comes down to the compromises they have to make by having Fallout 76 be a shared world. That's the issue with the game that just, it can't be fixed. You don't get the basic unique enemy compositions of other games. Instead, Fallout 76 just randomly spawns enemies that have two basic states. Uh, they try to attack you up close, or they stay in a place and shoot you. That's about it. The actual exploration can be pretty satisfying. You know, just because of the excellent world design, but the way enemies work is just never going to not feel artificial and distracting to me. The actual stories here aren't anything to write home about either. Uh, there's none of the nuance of Fallout New Vegas with these Atlantic City gangsters. They're pretty much exactly what they appear to be, and the writing came off kind of flat, honestly. The locations and scenarios, they're interesting, but the characters and dialogue don't make it pop like the best Fallout quests. Atlantic City looks and sounds great for a new area in Fallout 76 at least. Uh, it's got a jazzy soundtrack. It's got moody, dense locations. There's some pretty great spots to just stop and explore this place, like the Aquarium of the Atlantic. Uh, it's just a great looking place. Fallout 76 is clearly showing its age these days, but the game still has some of the best ambient storytelling in the entire franchise. Some of the new enemies, uh, though, are really, like, extremely annoying. Like this swamp thing that automatically restores its health at random. If you have fire, it's fine. If you don't, it sucks. It's great to have actual NPCs and quests and uh, dialogue and everything. So the Atlantic City expansion is a great free addition to the game, but the real strength of Fallout 76 lies in the open world. And that's why the 19th expansion of the game, the titled Skyline Valley, is probably the most exciting addition to me. This update is coming to the full game in June, but you can play it on the public test server now. They put it uh, up on the 18th. It adds an entire new region to the game, bringing the total number to seven. Um, the game's added new locations before, but this is the first time they've added an entire region, and there is a lot here, including an entirely new vault, which is always fun to explore in these games. Um, there's more than 30 points of interest in this area, which is, I mean, really, really good. This is what I'm here for in these games, just wandering around and finding interesting stuff. That's what this update's about. Uh, I'm digging the atmosphere of this place, too. The red lighting uh, in the distance really gives it a kind of final area type vibe. It looks dangerous, and while I haven't gotten a chance to spend a lot of time here, I'm really liking everything I'm seeing so far. Uh, there's a lot about Fallout 76 I've really grown to appreciate, but if there's one thing that hit me like a bucket of cold water when I started it up, it's, a, it's the live service stuff. Right when you load up the game, you're really getting bombarded with ads for Fallout First, the uh, subscription service, the new stuff you can buy at the Atomic Store. All this, I, it all takes me right out of the gameplay, and it never goes away. At least the game gives you lots of ways to earn atoms. Like, players that focus on doing daily missions get showered in them, but it all feels really out of place in a Fallout game. That sense of lonely exploration is ruined when you get a reminder on the screen about new events and other crap like that. And yeah, you can turn a lot of this UI stuff off in the options, but it's a design that it feels fundamentally incompatible with Fallout. That's my biggest problem with the game. It, and something a bunch of content updates can never truly fix. As a live service game, I would call it above average, like it's better than most live service games. Like if you're going into this thing with no expectations and aren't deliberately comparing it to other Fallout games, there's not a whole lot to complain about. I mean, not stuff that you're not going to see in another game anyway. But once you do compare it to Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 3 or even Fallout 4, it's missing a lot of that Fallout special sauce. I mean, we've been talking about this for a while now. It's obviously not all bad. There's a lot of good here. Um, this is easily one of the best, if not the best, open worlds 
the Fallout series has ever seen. Like, there's just a ton of uh, points of interests and unique little things, details, elements. Like the school announcements. Hello, students. Watoga High School is here for you. They go that extra mile to make every location feel unique. Like, all that effort, though, and you're still just fighting completely brainless zombies most of the time who just spawn out of nowhere and glitch out when they die. That's the problem. The quests and NPCs are huge and obviously make the game a lot better, but their implementation feels kind of half-baked at times. And the quest design is more limited than what you'd see in other games, obviously. Choices are mostly relegated to obvious binary choices and they're lacking in nuance and that's kind of what Fallout is known for. Um, there's also weird stuff. The expeditions are weird. Getting to Atlantic City feels like a vestigial system of some kind. Um, you have to go into the expeditions menu and select a zone, but now there's a drop-down menu that you can explore. Instead of doing the expedition, it's, it's weird, awkward, and a lot of the post-game additions are awkward in this same way. Uh, as free updates to a six-year-old game, it's hard to complain about too much of this stuff because it overall does make the experience a lot better. Uh, if you're like me, bought the game back in release, I would even say, even with all of the complaining, I'd recommend jumping back in, especially in June with the Skyline update. There's just so much stuff in the game now. The actual experience of playing is a lot smoother than it was. Uh, even with all of the problems, I'm a lot more positive about Fallout 76 overall in 2024. It's not a perfect Fallout game, obviously. It's compromised in a lot of ways. But the parts that work, like the exploration, they really work. And seeing uh, the setting of Appalachia, it's great. It can occasionally look quite beautiful. I don't know that I'd recommend buying the game at full price. There's too many microtransactions and live service crap to justify that. But at a discount, I think there's more than enough here to keep a Fallout fan entertained for quite a while. All it took was, you know, six years of continuous updating. And now Fallout 76 is a, a good game. Don't think it's a great game, but if you accept what this game is and what it isn't, I do think they've ultimately turned this one around. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.